G'day guys, Robbie here for Uncarved Block. Today we're going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to DIY your own climbing wall at home. We're going to run you through all the materials required and all the tools required. Give you a nice simple step-by-step -step guide. So grab a coffee, follow along, feel free to pause where you need to. And without further ado, let's get into it. We'll start by listing off all the materials and items you'll need to pick up for your wall. You need 50 T-nuts. You can pick these up for about 22 cents each off the Uncarved Block website. You'll need 16 90 degree galvanized bracing brackets. It'll set you back about $10 from Bunnings. You'll need 17 14 gauge timber batten screws to fix your ply panel to the frame. This will set you back about $15. 64 10 gauge timber hex head screws setting you back about $18. You'll need your trusty impact driver or drill, a battery, make sure you charge it, a tape measure, a 3mm timber drill bit for the pilot holes, a 12mm timber drill bit for your T-nut holes, a 5mm hex driver bit for the batten screws, and a 5 16th hex head socket bit for the timber screws. Now not essential, but really handy, is the uncarved block ergo wrench for fixing the bolts into your T-nuts. And not shown here, you'll also need three 4.5 meter lengths of 90 by 45 structural pine, setting you back $80. And of course, your 24 by 1200 by 17 structural plywood panel, setting you back From each of our 4.5 meter lengths, we'll make cuts at 26.55. You can mark this off using a combination square or a ruler, whatever you have on hand. We like to mark across the top and mark up vertically as well. This will help keep your cuts nice and straight, especially if you're using a handsaw. Make your cut and put each of these links aside for when we've put the frame together. Using the same technique as before, make another two cuts at 1200mm lengths. These are going to be used as our top and bottom frame pieces. Make your cuts and put these aside for later. And finally, we're going to make two more cuts at 532.5 mil lengths. These pieces are going to be used as our support timbers. Once your frame is built, 
these two pieces will be what the ply panel is fixed to. Now that you've made all your cuts, lay the links out on the floor in the position that you're going to be fixing them. Make sure your timbers are nice and flush at the top and bottom and on the edges. Take your 90 degree bracing bracket and center it to your panels. Start by fixing off one screw and if you need to, double check that your timbers haven't moved. Doing this on a nice smooth flat surface will make life a whole lot easier. If you're having troubles, you may want to use clamps to hold your timbers in place to make sure you've got a nice clean joint. Put two hex head screws in each side of your bracket to make sure it's nice and strong. Feel free to put in more, but two should suffice. Now it's time to make your way around the rest of the frame and fix off all the brackets. We recommend working around the corners, then up the middle before working on your smaller bracing struts. For the smaller support braces, measure up from the bottom of your frame 345 mil. Make a mark on the outside of the frame. Align the bottom of your smaller support frame to your line. Do this for both sides and fix off with your brackets. You've now got a nice sturdy frame ready for your ply panel. So let's get on to that. There's a few different ways you can prep your plywood panels. For this particular job, we found an old tin of paint laying around in the shed. This will save you a few bucks. Painting your panel is a really good way to make sure that everything is sealed and protected from the elements. If you're leaving your panel outdoors, you want to make sure that you paint all the edges, tops and bottoms. If you're wanting to texture your wall, now's the time to do it. You can do this by mixing sand through a latex-based paint and apply with a roller as usual. Now it's time to measure up for your T-nuts. Starting on the bottom left of your panel, measure 100mm up and 100mm in and make a mark. Do the same on the other side of your panel and then pull your tape measure across to join the dots. We're now going to make marks at 100mm across, 300mm across, 560mm across, at 850mm across and finally at 1100 across. Once you've marked those measurements along the top and the bottom of your panel, pull the tape along the full length joining the dots and we're now going to mark every 250mm from the top to the bottom. Now pull the tape across each dot and work your way across the full panel until all of your drill holes have been marked. It 
It's now time to grab your drill and the 12mm timber drill bit. Line up your bit on each of the marks that you've just made, making sure that your drill bit is perpendicular. It's pretty important that you keep that drill bit perpendicular when you're drilling out your holes. This will make sure that when you're installing your T-nuts, you don't have any issues. It'll also prevent any issues of misthreading when you're applying your bolts later on. Work your way around the rest of the panel until you've finished all your drill holes. Give it a good brush down and flip the panel over, ready for the next step. Now that you've drilled out all your 12mm holes, you'll see the inner part of your T-nut is just shy of 12mm, making it a nice snug fit. Pop your T-nut into the hole, and give it a gentle tap to seat it, and then smash away. You don't need to hit the T-nut so hard that your hammer starts damaging your wood. Just make sure they're in nice and firm. While you're watching me do all the hard work, I just wanted to take a minute to say that this particular panel only has 50 T-nuts in it. You can go ahead and use up to 70 to 100 T-nuts per plywood panel if you like. This will allow you to create more climbing roots and add more holds as you see fit. Now it's time to mount your plywood panel to your timber frame. Pop your frame down on a nice flat surface and grab your plywood panel. Make sure you're putting your panel the right way down. Your T-nuts need to be going against the frame. This is the back of your panel. Shuffle your panel around until all of your corners and edges are aligned, the bottoms to your bottom struts and the top to your top panel. Now that you've got your frame snugly matched up to your plywood panel, it's time to measure up for your batten screws. If you measure in from the edges 22mm, that'll make sure that your batten screws are going through the centre of your 90 by 45 frame. Starting from the bottom left and working your way across the bottom and then up the panel. Pilot hole using your three mil timber drill bit and then drive your batten screws in using an impact driver or drill if you've only got the one. Continue making your way up the panel by drilling your pilot holes and fixing your batten screws. When it comes to the centre batten screws, you'll need to measure across from the edge of your panel to 600mm in. This will ensure you're hitting the middle of that centre frame. When you finish putting in all your batten screws and fixing off the panel, grab a mate and lift the whole thing up and my hard work. We're nearly finished. There's only one more thing to do. When it comes to mounting your holds, Typically there's no top and bottom to a hold. This is all done on personal preference, 
Some ways will make it harder to climb, some ways will make it easier to climb. It's all to taste. What you want to do, grab your hold and grab your bolt. Using your ergo wrench, you can put the bolt straight through the wall into the T-nut and tighten off. Make sure you don't over tighten the bolt into your T-nut. This can cause the T-nut to fail and possibly result in injury. A handy little tip while installing your holds is to put your bolt in most of the way. Grab your hold, spin it into the position that you want it in, and then tighten off using your ergo wrench. So there you have it guys, a nice simple wall build that you can DIY on a Sunday afternoon. If you've got any questions about the wall, pop them in the comments below, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And for all your other climbing requirements, head on over to uncarvedblock.com.au. We'll see you out there soon.